the book which we present tonight is the result of an experiment and of a very long journey together. It is an experiment because it reflects our collective thinking and researching about the antecedents of and occurrences during an unprecedented revolutionary moment in what sometimes is still called the Middle East and North Africa. And the repercussions of these events are still very much with us. Um, let's think of the horrific violence in Palestine and Israel, the ongoing violence in Syria, Libya, and Yemen, but also the perhaps more hopeful struggles in the Sudan. And of course, there are also many other repercussions. It was an experiment because we quite spontaneously decided to follow a call by Volkswagen Foundation, directly calling for projects reflecting on the transformative processes of the first decade and a bit of the 21st century. And we then, of course, had to identify as a small team our joint interests. It was also an experiment because only some of us knew each other and we had never worked together as an interdisciplinary and multilingual team combining cultural studies, sociology, history, architecture, urbanism and anthropology. And here you can see the core, um, the core, co core conspirators of the early days of our project. We come from quite different traditions and the debates we had during a preliminary workshop in Berlin in 2013 were only a very small premonition of things to come. Beyond our small joint quest, to understand how participatory spaces in the real and virtual worlds had allowed for the articulation of the demands which shaped the Arab uprisings. A major aim of our project was to train junior scholars and to create networks beyond that splintered region known as Middle East and North Africa or MENA. And this is another experiment in the book. The contributions come from well-established professors and MA students, as well as from mid-career and PhD scholars. And here is um, an image of one of our first workshops, not with everybody involved, sadly. This also includes a commitment to bring together scholars and activists to reflect jointly and this is something which proved to be more challenging than we might have thought initially, um, because the demands of acad academia about an impartial balancing of arguments are sometimes quite different from the interests of activists. While we worked with national teams, we strove to have at least once a year meetings of all researchers and created opportunities also for small exchanges of lecturers for workshops, as well as for electronic communication. And the joys of some of this electronic communication you might be able to enjoy tonight. Our joint journey took us from Berlin, which you can see in this image, to Rabat. At least by now, you're probably wondering where our Moroccan co-editors are on our panel. We didn't fall out with them, but there was a diplomatic crisis between Morocco and Germany, an ongoing crisis about the West Sahara. And this means that since the beginning of this year, Moroccans are no longer officially permitted to, co um, to contribute to such events. So while we personally very much miss them and very much are still in communication with them, they are institutionally unable to join us tonight. And I really would like to emphasize that this does not affect our cooperation or our friendship on an academic and personal level. Travel is an issue for Palestinians, not only in Gaza, but in the West Bank. Um, ah, this is an image of our workshop in Rabat. And um, now let me come back to the uh, question of travel and participation. It is not only pandemics which stand in the way of direct interactions or um, diplomatic crises. Yazid's absence today is in no little way also a reflection of the past events and resultant preoccupations in Palestine time. And here I'm referring obviously to the last couple of weeks. And this I believe is an important methodological reminder that academic cooperation has preconditions which include a certain degree of settledness and comfort. 
which obviously is a big issue in Palestine right now. Um, Yazid and everybody else could luckily um, participate in Amman, where our journey took us next. Um, here are some images from our workshop there before we reconvened in Berlin for a workshop to discuss the chapters of this book. Along the way, we used these meetings for small introductions to important locales of participation, past and present, such as Laboratoire in Casablanca, to which Fatma Aitmus writes in her contribution, or to the Schumann Art Center in Amman, where we actually held our workshop. These visits were an integral part of our journey, both academically and intellectually, because they triggered new reflections, comparisons, and understandings of the often rapidly changing nature of such physical spaces. Collectively, we'd like to express our heartfelt thanks to Volkswagen Foundation for their generous support and flexibility, which also allowed us to accommodate the changing political circumstances changes in the composition of our teams. Some members obtained positions and took a step back, while others joined formally or informally for the discussions, meetings, and the final contribution. We hope that this joint publication, which actually we don't yet hold in our hands because again, the pandemic has made shipping very complicated. We hope that this publication, as well as individual publications, and the output presented, for example, at the conference of the Arab Council for Social Sciences in Beirut in 2017, or during lectures at the universities of Rabat and Ifran, which you can see here in 2017, justify Volkswagen's expenditure and patience awaiting the printed results. Finally, let me acknowledge and thank very warmly Berenice Brüggemann, our intrepid, intrepid student assistant, who has been with us from the very beginning, and who has been an invaluable support for Sarah Jokiewicz, as well as to Jan Brauburger, who helped out when Sarah was taking a time, some time out. Without them and their willingness to seek solutions for the most short notice needs to improvise in order to get people from A to B, find them a place to stay or to put together plausible financial reports on the basis of four different systems, this project would have found it within months. Thank you both very much. And let me now hand over to Randa Abubakar for introducing the book. Um, I would like to welcome everybody uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I don't know what time it is at your end. We have people joining from different parts, I think. Uh, so uh, have a good evening. Um, and um, I will be uh, giving um, an overview of the uh, conceptual and methodological framework, some key findings. Uh, please, then, I will uh, turn off my video. Uh, in late 2010 and early 2011, uh, the Arab region was overtaken by huge sociopolitical socio upheavals that took most of us by surprise. And these upheavals are in many ways ongoing until the present not only on the political level, but in transformations in the social, cultural, and artistic spheres. Uh, these transformations uh, had been ongoing for a few years before the Arab uprising and continue uh, with varying degrees of visibility until today. Investigating the making of spaces and of participatory practices under such conditions is the overriding principle of the project and the main aim of the present book. Allow me now to share uh, with you some of uh, the ideas uh, that I have prepared for the presentation of today uh, for presenting. As I said, we are happy uh, to, uh, we're happy with the cover and we are looking forward to having the actual uh, print copies in hand. Uh, the book examines the diversity of factors and actors involved in uh, these transformations by exploring case studies from Morocco, Egypt, Palestine, and Kuwait, uh, where space-based participation, um, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, space-based participation, uh, such as in microspaces of protest and sit-ins, 
community initiatives, cultural centers, uh, media collectives, art spaces, as well as digital spaces, produced forms of cultural, social, and political expression. The various cases studied uh, the various case studies in the book ask, among other things, some questions, such as which actors claim the respective spaces and who becomes involved in which context. They also investigate mechanisms of inclusion and exclusion, as well as the different ways in which class, gender, and citizenship play out in each case. Uh, I will introduce the book in some more detail now through an outline of some key concepts it builds on and uh, an outline, a very brief outline of the methodologies it uses. So uh, briefly an outline of some of its e key concepts, which uh, also feature in the title of the book and of the conceptual and methodological frameworks adopted. So uh, the first of these the key concepts is change. The book presents a manifold understanding of change, which is large enough to also encompass the potential for change. Limation of spaces at the hands of engaged citizens, which in turn allows for processes of critical knowledge production. This understanding of change features as interpolations against authoritarian systems, whether they are political, social, or religious, against dominant hegemonic culture, or more generally against increasing, increasingly globalized neoliberal policy, policies. Change is also located in practices of resistance against specific local developments and local types of disenfranchisement. The second key concept is space. Uh, the book adopts a relational understanding of space, which highlights the mutuality between human actions and thus the social and the constitution of space. Uh, this involves manifold conceptualizations of space, such as space space as heterotopia, space as the public sphere and public opinion. Uh, I will have to turn off my camera now, sorry. Uh, mental and social space and concepts of collective agency, such as the commons addition of space also involves the digital realm as the venue extending the territoriality of participants by compensating for the cutting up, confiscation, and heavy policing of physical space. So uh, what I was saying about space is that uh, the study of practices that reconceive, redefine, and reshape public space uncover the various roles it plays in fostering agency and claiming representation. In the case studies the book presents, space emerges in a variety of manifestations as a player in power contestations between states such as small demonstrations and sit-ins, as catalyst fostering community participation in self-governed spaces such as informal urban districts, refugee camps, youth centers, and art spaces, as agent in the reclamation of the right to the village or the city through walks and small community businesses, as a digital venue for the emergence of the discursive practices of unaffiliated individuals and digital communities, and as a heuristic device allowing for the combination and complementarity of online and offline participation in the work of protest movements and cultural collectives. The third concept is participation, and we deviate from the strictly normative perspective of the notion of participation, whose primary focus is on the institutional level of politics, which involves an intentionality aimed at influencing public policy and normative notions of citizenship. Instead, 
we adopt a broader understanding of participation evident in informal community-based networks who largely operate outside institutional backing and who adopt space-based bottom-up mechanisms for the reclamation of both public space and means of representation. It is here important to add that the book does not seek to contrast formal and informal participation, but rather goes beyond the formal informal binary, uh, since the modes of participation cannot always be strictly classified along these lines, as shown in some of the chapters of the book. The actors involved are mostly, though not exclusively, used from different political orientations and genders. They range between civil society activists, artists, anonymous digital content creators, and ordinary inhabitants of neighborhoods. So finally, uh, a note on the interdisciplinary nature of the book, uh, where conceptual and methodological approaches are concerned. One of the most interesting aspects of the project was the involvement of various researchers that belong to diverse disciplinary backgrounds. And this has greatly enriched the research produced within its framework. The contributions in the book, uh, in their turn, reflect a wide range of disciplinary backgrounds and conceptual approaches from the fields of sociology, history, anthropology, urban planning, architecture, cultural studies, and translation studies. They also use a wide variety of methodological tools, such as in situ participant observation, structured and unstructured interviews, archival and historical documentation, reviews, and content analysis. Uh, the political, social, and cultural specificities of the region and the context studies studied have also influenced the variety of methodological approaches adopted by the contributors, which varied even when some of the case studies involved similar media of participation. This is apparent, for instance, uh, in the way walking tours as acts of reappropriating space have been approached through the tools of historical research in a chapter on the Palestinian village of Jabba. The way walking tours as acts of reappropriating space have been approached uh, through the tools of historical research in a chapter on the Palestinian village and Jabba, and through the lens of culture entrepreneurship in a chapter on Kuwait City. It's also evident in how digital activism is approached through the lens of participant observation in a chapter on the February 20th movement in Morocco, uh, through archival work in a chapter on Mosirin Media Collective in Egypt, and through the angle of translation studies in a chapter on digital cultural production. Other instances of how the conceptual and methodological approaches are informed by the context and the nature of the spaces studied abound in the book and can be gleaned from a close reading of its chapters, which we will leave to interested readers. But now I hand over to Zara for a more focused outline of the parts and chapters of the book. Thank you. Here, um, here I am, I'll take now over and walk you through the book. Welcome also to Yasmin, who finally managed to join. Um, yeah, the 13 chapters of the book um, included in this volume are grounded into four, uh, four main sections. Um, oops, I'm to this actually, that's the overview. And uh, these sections uh, reflect commonalities among the spaces they investigate, as well as among manifestations of participation there. Part one, um, rethinking participation in informal and informal spaces focuses on the mechanisms of participation in both uh, state regulated spaces and spaces with a more fluid structure. Section discusses grassroots initiated participatory processes in which the state or local, local authorities engage in webs of negotiations with citizens and occupants of space. Um, at one side of the spectrum is the case of Mohammed Seng Avenue in Rabat, where the Moroccan parliament is located. 
Peer protests are sometimes tolerated by the state and are organized with a perceptible degree of coordination between protesters and the state. At other points in time, however, they are forbidden or cracked down upon, depending on the sensitivity, sensitivity of issues at hand and on political circumstances. Hisham et Mansour, in his chapter on protests as a space for contentious politics and political learning among youth in Morocco, examines how that central urban avenue is used as a space, not only for political participation, but also to foster an emerging political culture. Um, sorry. The Azura Sanatao's chapter, which comes next, the concept of participation in Cairo's unplanned areas, is then a contribution to the ongoing yet understudied mechanisms of local governments in informal areas in the region. It analyzes how different forms of governance by state institutions, NGOs, and participatory resident initiatives interact in the local governance of Esbit Ahagana one of Cairo's biggest informal areas. Yasmin Berian's uh, interstitial spaces and controlled participation, the youth center of High Mohammadi during the years of lead in Morocco, looks into yet another mode of participation. By presenting a micro history of the youth center, Berian analyzes the nuanced interaction between state institutions and civil society and the governance of local space. Um, participation in spaces of exile, the making of change in a Palestinian refugee camp in the West Bank by Dorota Vodonetska Pijanowska presents then a case study of the nearly 70-year-old Al-Amari Palestinian refugee camp in the West Bank. The chapter investigates the evolution and sustainability of systems of self-governance in a space of prolonged encampment. The different configurations of spatial participation and activism presented in this section provide insights into the role of the central state in informal participatory practices and how this varies from one geographic context to another. Furthermore, the chapters analyze how configurations of activism are largely influenced by the necessity to collaborate with the authorities. Part two, reconfiguration space through contestation, outlines then the mechanisms of contestation in spaces of conflict, where both the space and the participatory practices it hosts are created in active confrontations between participants and the state. In the challenge of reconstruct, reconstructing public space, the case of Mohammed Seng Avenue, Muhtar Hadas and Yunus Ben Muru uh, examine the protests staged by diverse groups on the famous Avenue Rabat, but also on virtual platforms. Studying some of the performative practices, the chapter examines, examines the interconnectedness and reciprocal relationship between spatial practices on the one hand and the tactics of containment by the state on the other. Following on that, May Ayad in The Muslim Brotherhood and the Creation of Spectacles in Nasser City investigates the sit-in staged by members of the Muslim Brotherhood in 2013 in the Dabal Arabia Square in Cairo. The chapter analyzes the conflictual encounter between the occupants and the authorities. In doing so, it also sheds light on how the interplay between spatial practices and official policies directly and indirectly influence the appropriation of the space. Also, the construction of dis discursive, discursive spaces generated by these active confrontations is touched upon in this section. Mulud Amgar's chapter on topographies of the discourse of resistance um, in the public sphere a case study by, uh, of the activists of the February 20 movement focuses then on the discourse of protest adopted by the movement together with, uh, together with its mechanism of movement in public space. Part three then looks at cultural production in citizen appropriated cultural spaces, media collectives and humorous discourses discursive digital production. 
what the physical and virtual spaces investigated in the section have in common is that they are foremost non-institutionalized spaces of cultural or artist, artistic production. Then the Abu Bakr's chapter, Mock Translation as Sociopolitical Commentary in the Egyptian Digital Sphere, examines the expansion of an already growing arena of social and political participation in Egypt. The playful carnivalist aspect of mock translation is traced as a means of combating the hegemony of mainstream discourse and also analyze it as a means of fostering the social and political participation of formerly non-politicized citizens. In a similar vein, the chapter, uh, the chapter Spaces of Kaisha and Casablanca, Isles of Creativity in an Often Hostile Ocean by Fatma Ismus, analyzes the establishment of community-based spaces of cultural and artistic production. The, chap the cap chapters sheds light on the mechanisms of negotiation between civil actors and the states, and it highlights how these emerging civic actors work toward the creation of new paradigms of cultural and artistic production. Mona Khalil's a chapter on citizen collectives in post-2011 Egypt, contestation mechanisms, then looks into the contentious space of citizen initiatives that use online offline mechanisms of participation. She outlines how the internal structure of these initiatives on the one hand and policies of state censorship on the other are instrumental in shaping the mechanisms of the durability, durability and sense temporality of such initiatives. The case studies in this third section can be seen to contribute to the emerging discussion of the role of citizen media, a debated concept used to provide a more coherent framework for the study of the mobilization of ordinary citizens and other concept, concepts such as that of popular culture. Part four then um, focuses on space related activism at the interface between space, cultural production, economic factors, and the politics of memory. Yazid Anani's uh, Cultural Heter Heterotopias and the Making of the Political sets out to investigate the role played by the neoliberal transformation of cities and urban centers. Against this background, the chapter examines city exhibitions, an art exhibition initiated by Jose University as representing the emergence of agency in the shaping of cultural slash artistic spaces, and consequently in the shaping of the political in Palestine. Engaged with the issue of the ownership and reclamation of public space, Renat Gerard, um, Genius Loki, the spirit of the place, moves to rural areas in Palestine. The author investigates the web of interrelatedness of border, natural and visual elements in creating a sense of place, and also in fostering a sense of responsibility toward the organization of the rural. Last but not least, um, my chapter on culturepreneurship and reclaiming urban space in Kuwait City analyzes two initiatives in Kuwait that aim to engage citizens to get involved in maintaining the spaces they inhabit. Both social enterprises target change through either projects of knowledge production or hands-on approaches. They are at the same time framed as business ventures. They are at the same time framed as business ventures. The case studies in, last, in this last section thus reflect on how artistic and cultural interventions can challenge the confiscation of public space at the hands of neoliberal politics. At the same time, they provide insights into, debate, into debates around the role of entrepreneurship and activism. Yeah, and I'll now hand over to Nelida Fukaro, who kindly agreed to act as a discussant and moderate. Um, thank you, Nelida. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. And uh, um, yes, I had a great pleasure to read this book in advance. And I tell you, everybody should read it. So I thought I will just spare a few minutes before starting the Q&A session to tell you what I think it's, uh, it's remarkable about this book and also what's, what's important. 
First of all, let me start from the title, Spaces of Participation. I mean, and the title of this volume truly reflects the regional inclusiveness of this project, uh, both in terms of case studies presented in the chapter, but also of the multinational composition of the team of researchers that have kind of carried out uh, Egypt, Morocco, Palestine, and Germany. And this is truly an achievement, particularly in this kind of sad age of uh, uh, pandemic blocks and all the rest. Um, what also I found uh, quite uh, distinctive about this book uh, is that many chapters also represent truly embedded case studies. First-hand empirically driven research uh, conducted by scholars who are actually had been often involved uh, in the events they, they were analyzing and they've written about. So here I think uh, is uh, a first gem of the book. Uh, and I think what's also important, has been important uh, for me to see in this book uh, that I don't see very often is this idea that this volume challenges the boundaries between academic research and activism. Boundaries that are often either they are too rigid or they are crossed in a way that loses sight of uh, balance and academic rigor. And indeed, this is not the case here. Uh, the volume is empirically sound, nuanced, and extremely informative. It also is able to transmit the vibrancy uh, that actually is, has been shaking the region since 2011. Um, I also like the idea that this book uh, is not so much concerned with 2011 as such, uh, but actually what surrounded it, what came before it, the events themselves, but also what follow it, followed it. And, you know, I'm an historian, so I actually see this very much as the beginning of a recounting of a long durée um, of the Arab Spring. And as historians, we like very much this idea of the long durée. Um, now, um, this is a book that in my view could really kick, uh, kick start, uh, really kick start an assessment of the Arab Spring as an historical event. Uh, so um, in this sense and in many other senses, also this book I think will have a very long uh, shelf life. Um, I also note, notice with, with great delight that there is a constant focus and a very kind of uh, uh, overt one on the youth uh, as actors, a category, a category both sociological and political that sometimes I feel has been neglected uh, in the study of contentious politics uh, um, in the Middle East, in the Arab world, and more generally uh, in the Middle East, uh, uh, subsumed in my view often under the generalities of the label uh, social movements. Lastly, what I really have also appreciated is this focus on the cultural, creative, and artistic spheres as domain of political engagement. Uh, areas uh, that I, I think they've become really increasingly prominent uh, uh, throughout the region as mode of uh, expression with the tightening up of state control, particularly after the events of 2011. And even in countries like the United Arab Emirates, where I live, where there is a very glamorized and vi vibrant art scene, where the political slant uh, is there, but is not often self-evident or studied. Uh, so I, I really welcome this. Uh, um, so in this sense, uh, I see this book also moving forward the literature uh, on arts and politics, uh, uh, arts, culture, and politics in the Arab world initiated among others uh, some years ago, I mean, almost 10 years ago now, by a former colleague of mine at SOAS, Charles Strip. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, this book uh, is a great addition to spatial politics, uh, which is a, um, a topic that uh, you know I've been very very fond of uh, uh, in the past uh, uh, few years. 